welcome to the Christian Blogger Podcast, and I'm your Christian blogger from somewhere deep inside the Pacific Northwest. Okay, I guess I'm on. So I'm learning how to use this screen sharing software, and I saw this story uh, through King County on the King County website for Washington State. Uh, it says Redmond Hotel is the latest King County Health through housing purchase. And uh, so what this is, is it says King County has purchased the former Silver Cloud Inn in Redmond to provide housing to people experiencing chronic homelessness. This is the fourth purchase in County Executive Dow Constantine's Health Through Housing Initiative to provide supportive housing for people experiencing chronic or long-term homelessness. With acquisitions to date, Health Through Housing will provide approximately 433 units for King County's chronically homeless residents. Um, Redmond, Washington is maybe a 12 minute drive northeast of Bellevue. Um, it's very close. I'm happy to see this happening here. And I actually got wind of this story from my Nextdoor app. Uh, somebody started a discussion uh, string here. Uh, did you see the purchase of the hotel for homel the homeless shelter um, on 152nd and 20th today by the county? There are 306 comments, so this really got things hopping. There's all kinds of comments going on here, um, but this is a really good thing. It is, it's a good start. So it says King County has purchased the former Silver Cloud Inn in Redmond, its fourth hotel, purchased through the Health Through Housing Initiative. King County Executive Dow Constantine joined Redmond Mayor Angela Burney and other guests at a news conference today to announce the $28.25 million purchase of the hotel, which will soon provide housing for up to 144 people experiencing homelessness out of thousands of people in King County that are homeless. Um, this came out July 14th, 2021. Well, they're starting with something here. I guess this is their fourth um, acquisition of a hotel they've been renovating. So I haven't been up on this and I've been very um, much interested in the homeless issue over here um, on my Nextdoor app. I'm not showing the screen just to keep people's names private with all their comments. Um, there's been a couple of discussions started where people are very interactive. There's lots of comments with the homeless um, chemical dependency uh, strings started here. Um, so some of the comments here, it says, uh, one person says, we should act. It is unacceptable to have permitted drug usage directly next to a kinder care and three schools. So I'm really not aware of where this is exactly. They encourage uh, people in Redmond and Bellevue to write their mayors, also the Washington State Legislative uh, Representatives. Um, also, the King County uh, Republican Party. Uh, the district is a moderate one, they write, so there is a possibility of flipping it if Democrats are, are keen on turning East Side into drug-infested slums. Okay, this does get political. There is some anti-Republican, anti-Democrat comments. They go back and forth. Uh, one person says, Democrats don't want to turn the east side into drug-infested slums. That appears to be the goal of the Republicans who think they could turn the issue into a political winner. They want to make sure the homeless remain on the streets so Republicans can start winning some elections. Okay, happy thoughts there. Um, another person writes, if they can use drugs in their rooms of the building that is right next to the schools and kinder care, there will be dealers around who could supply the drugs to them. While at it, they might as well sell to the school kids. So of course, this is a concern. It is um, very alarming, I'm sure, to people living in the area with young kids going to school, even, you know, teenagers. That's, that's a tough age to keep teenagers away from, you know, drug and alcohol experimentation, as I'm sure you all know. Um, so let's see. 
uh, scrolling down, uh, somebody says, I think turning one of those new downtown Redmond apartment monstrosities into a shelter is a great idea. And there's a plot of land near me right by the bus line and a short walk from the future light rail station that just has a condemned house sitting on it going to waste. It'd be a good location too. So with the future light rail station coming in, I know there is, um, this is located sort of near me in Bellevue. Uh, there are concerns that homeless people are going to be on the light rail a lot, sleeping, riding back and forth, whatever, they'll be using that. So that is a concern. Um, okay, let's see. Somebody wrote a lot of data here, and it was really great. Um, it says... Um, okay, where was I reading? It is estimated 33% of the homeless population uh, faces mental illness. I'm watching the time because this thing is going to quit recording. Okay, 33% of the homeless population faces mental illness, which is factually a health issue that also affects community health. Women experiencing homelessness have a two-time higher rate, 60% of mental illness than men, often from domestic or sexual violence and other abuse, both in their past and while homeless. Over 70% of missing, runaway, throwaway, and abducted children report substance abuse. And that's really sad. I used to be a social worker in foster care. And foster kids do often, you know, they have been known to run away. And then once they age out of the system and they're on their own, much of the time they become homeless and uh, they get into, you know, drugs, alcohol, um, you know, sex trafficking and this kind of thing. Very, very sad. Uh, they do need a lot of support, kids in foster care, especially when they're um, of age and they have to leave foster care and they oftentimes are not prepared and don't have a place to go. And so the comment, again, getting back to this, LGBTQ persons have a 120% higher risk of homelessness contributed to by higher rates of abuse of lesbian homeless women and frequent job discrimination experienced by those who are transgender. These numbers came from addictioncenter.com and they wrote other uh, statistics here. So people are very concerned about this. It is, I would be um, very interested um, and will do the research on what is the percentage of homeless people in Bellevue um, as compared to Seattle. In Bellevue and Redmond, we're not used to seeing any homeless people, but there have been a few people in Bellevue with one lady with a homeless tent. Uh, somebody took a picture, people got upset that the picture was taken and publicized because they wanted to respect you know, her dignity, I guess. And she reportedly was homeless living right off the sidewalk um, in Bellevue for religious reasons, as people reported. Um, somebody took a picture of a hypodermic needle in Bellevue. This is within the past couple of weeks. So it's really alarming. We're not used to seeing this in Bellevue. It, we don't want to see more. Most people like me living in Bellevue, I've been here two and a half years. We don't want to see Bellevue turn into um, the next Seattle. Um, so a lot of comments here on my Nextdoor app. And I'd like to write more um, about this and do more videos about it. So let's see. Anything else here? Um, okay. And it says, addition, in addition to a room to call their own, the hotel will, will offer residents 24-7 on-site staffing that will include case management and access to physical and behavioral health services. Um, this has to be mandatory that they're taking care of their issues in order to be able to stay into a room here. Um, there are thousands of homeless people. There are very limited amount of spaces in these kinds of um, converted hotels for homeless people. So they need to really follow program rules and start really taking care of their issues. Um, it says a competitive process whatever that means, will determine the on-site service provider before the facility is operational later this year. Um, okay, so, 
anything else here? During the COVID-19 pandemic, as we move people out of congregate shelters and into hotels to keep them safe, we learned a very important lesson. When you give a person experiencing homelessness a door, privacy, and security, it makes a huge difference in their ability to stabilize, take care of their health, and start thinking about how they can move from homelessness to housing. And I agree with that 100%. Um, I just don't know how you can get cleaned up and get a good night's sleep, make sure all your belongings are locked up and safe, and then go out and look for a job or go to drug treatment or go to mental health appointments or, you know, whatever you have to do. But um, I really hope this starts working. I know that my taxes, tax money I pay, I want it to get into the hands of people who are not going to waste money. A lot of times people, you know, get money like nonprofits or whatever to serve the homeless and they don't use it. Um, you know, you have the president or CEO getting, you know, hundred thousands of dollars uh, pay, um, you know, out of these um, monies given to them and it's just not going to where it needs to go. So people take advantage. I know in Seattle, a couple of years ago, there was a story, a news story, that Seattle had bought these big empty, like shipping containers that were just being stored, but they were meant to be used by the homeless, but nobody was getting the benefit of using them. They were empty in storage um, because King County didn't know where to put them. So nobody had the forethought to take millions of dollars by these, you know, containers and then nobody's using them. What was the purpose of that? And that is what I have an issue with when the wrong people get the money for these social programs and they're not being used effectively or efficiently. And, you know, some of these, you know, um, executives or whatever in these programs that get the money, they're just pocketing, you know, big um, paychecks and it's not really going to help the people that it's supposed to serve. So this is good. I, I'm going to follow up on this. Maybe I can get out and get some pictures of um, some of the homeless one or two people uh, that people have shared on my Nextdoor app. Um, people get upset, uh, at least on Nextdoor. Um, people were upset that somebody took a picture of this lady. I guess they didn't feel it was dignified for her picture to be publicized. I mean, what are you going to do? This is the reality. And saying that she's living out there on the sidewalk for religious reasons, that doesn't fly with me. I mean, just common sense. Um, it doesn't make any sense. What kind of religion have you heard about that for religious reasons, they have to live out in a tent and be homeless? I don't think there is a religion. Okay. Um, so anyway, I'll sign off for now. Thank you for your time. Um, God bless. Have a great day. Until next time. This has been the Christian blogger from somewhere deep inside the Pacific Northwest. Until next time, God bless.